What's up, Internet? You're tuning to episode 97 of Nintendo Noise, Flip Screen Games Weekly Nintendo Podcast. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined today by my, by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show, Steve. It's not, it's not me, you should be welcome back. <laughs> yeah, of course, because also making her grand return to the show today, Miss Sierra Plus Ultra, welcome back. Hi, thank you. Hello, <sighs> hello, welcome back. It's been far too long, but you're, too you're back. Long. I feel like an entire millennia is back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you were off, uh, you know, doing some rock star stuff, all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, good to be back. Truly, good to have you back. Yeah, yeah and I mean, I just, I just want to know when, when the world tour is. When do, I, when do we get to see a show with Sierra in the UK? Ah, uh, not soon know. enough. I hope by the time we can get over there, I ha- <laughs> we can have like a full roadie crew, and we have like pyrotechnics and stage hydraulics and i wear stage and I, hydraulics <laughs> come out of the stage like beyonce and i have a headset mic but we'll see that. you come up in in you know because you did some some casual cosplay on tour as well so you gotta yeah. pick like and uh well, maybe like rosalina right get like some stars oh that would out. be so dope <laughs> yeah <laughs> need the nihilistic luma Yes. Which one of your bandmates is that, Luma? That's the question. (laughs) Probably either Joe or Jamie, I think. All right, there we go. Yeah. (laughs) But you know what? Uh, You both picked a good week to come back because you know what? You know what time it is. It's time to talk about the next console after the Nintendo Switch, baby. Of course. It's like, it's like no time passed at all, Sierra. The last time you were here, I'm sure that's what we talked about. You're finally back. Uh, it's time to talk about it again. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's so funny because literally the week, because uh, I, I just, I've been gone a week. That's it. One week. I missed one show. The show I left, AV wrote in and was like, what are we, what's Nintendo going to have to do to stop, get people to stop saying they need to release a new console? And, and now I'm back and we're talking about another new console and it's not, it's, it's Nintendo's fault. It's, well, I swear of course, it's Nintendo's fault. And of course, right, the one that you miss, it's the Nintendo Direct, and they talked about, like, Detective Pikachu 2. They talked about, like, all this stuff that you've been talking about for years. And I was like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> what a week to miss. That's crazy. Like, I yeah. genuinely thought Detective Pikachu was, was dead. I thought they'd killed that project. Absolutely. But to see it show up again, I was just like, wow, okay. The return of Detective Pikachu. Can we have another movie now? Because I really liked that film. It's coming out this year, too, which is crazy, but... So much coming out this year. It was like two two Mario games coming out in the same month. I was like, what? Why? I think it was, I forget. I think it was It was either Mango or Asobi in the Discord who pointed out that there was like six Mario announcements in that. <laughs> yeah, there was, like, it was loaded. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but Nintendo didn't p- disappoint this week because when I was sitting down to put together the show, like right you know, before this news broke, I was like, man, you know, a week after the direct, what are we going to talk about? You know, we'll do some evergreen stuff. You know, everybody wrote in with a bunch of good stuff. I don't even know if we're going to get it to all of it today because we got to talk about, uh, I guess, what is debatably news, depending on your interpretation of the statement. But uh, there is a new bit of news that's been taken the round uh, that's come from a uh, recent Q&A with Nintendo and their investors uh, from June which has been translated by um, someone known as Genki. It's uh, Genki underscore JPN, if you want to go give them a follow on Twitter, uh, who translated the um, transcript of the uh, investors Q&A. And there was a specific quote that's been getting some attention here. And uh, I want to I wanna pick it apart with the two of you today. So uh, the tweet from Genki said, Nintendo president Shinto Furukawa says they plan to make a smooth transition for customers from Nintendo Switch to the next generation console by using the the Nintendo account. And then the actual translated quote from Furukawa says, as for the transition from Nintendo Switch to the next generation machine, we want to do as much as possible in order to smoothly transition our customers while utilizing the Nintendo account. And then uh, he also made mention of the fact that there are now more than 290 million Nintendo accounts that are being used across Nintendo Switch and mobile as well. So that's part of their kind of incur, you know, that's a part of the desire to keep that going, right, is to have cohesion for that user base of 290 million users already. So, I mean, it's got to be the the Switch Online customers that they care more about as well. Like how many people are paying them monthly or annually 
for these subscription services, they don't want to see those those go by the wayside. Uh, they want want to see those those continue and carry over to the next to the next console, whatever that may be. So now my question is, how do you how do you take this comment right? Because I've so seen some people reply to this and say this isn't actually new news, right? Like we had that that investor conversation from over a year ago now where they talked about how important it was to maintain that user base to the next console, how it's something that they've struggled with in the past, right? We've talked all about that transition from the DS to the 3DS or the Wii to the Wii U and, and the struggling to keep the momentum that they established in kind of the new innovative cycle. And what I think is interesting here is the specific mention of the Nintendo account, right? Is saying that that's how they see keeping that that momentum right and i guess my question is like what is that what does that mean actually is that meaning we're getting a full backwards compatibility library like we've come to expect on playstation and xbox or is that more in name only where we're going to keep our account on the next system it'll have the same login all that stuff but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be able to carry the library over that the eShop will be like one consistent storefront that moves over all that kind of stuff that i think is kind of what we're hoping for yeah i don't know i feel like it's kind of a nod to backwards compatibility and that's what i'm hoping i mean you know i feel like we're all on the same page like how can they get better than the switch why don't they just make it better like so i really hope that what this means is that like not only will like personal data be uh easily transferred over but like our entire libraries, like game save data, um, like everything. Like cloud everything. save functionality, stuff cloud like save that. Functionality. Yeah. I just because like if it's See, literally I, I just... really want to believe that. I really do. But like <laughs> they can't even get cloud saves right at the moment. The fact that you have that to go through a weird process when you move to a different switch just for an Animal Crossing save, or there's some goofiness with Splatoon saves as well, where the data isn't stored in a different way. That cloud saves don't quite work in the exact same way. I struggle to believe that they can do this as a seamless experience. I mean, we still don't have usernames. We're still using friend codes. Does that stay? Do I keep the same friend code when I move over to the next generation console? Or do I get a new one like I did when I moved from the Wii to the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch? That code changed every single time and it was unique to that that generation of console. I couldn't use a, a Wii friend code on a Wii U or a Wii U friend code on a Nintendo Switch. It was like its own closed off system. So I kind of think I agree with you, Sierra, that it is maybe a bit of a nod to it being in the same, the same system, the same ecosystem. I don't think it's quite confirmation that it's full backwards compatibility. I, I think they've got a, a, a hard task to do that. And I also think that they need to get third parties on board if they're going to allow you just to bring over your whole library and, and you don't have to pay to play these games again on the next generation system. Maybe that's like an opt-in experience in the same way that it is over on Xbox, where um, if you want smart delivery, the publisher can either opt-in or opt-out. But if they're going to name the next console the Switch, which I think most people are pretty confident they're going to do that, then... I think that's slightly different. It's like, yes, it's a next generation console, but it's still in that Switch family of systems in the same way that the DS and the 3DS, while being completely different systems, felt like one and the same, felt like it was a similar generation and it just seamlessly went from one to the next. It's an interesting, it's an interesting question because you bring up the third party support and I, I, don't, I don't know how that would work in the era we exist in now with digital but i mean you think about some of the past console releases and you know i don't i don't really see why that would be a problem right like i can play my ps4 library on my ps5 i can you know and that's that doesn't have anything to do with smart delivery it just it supports mm -hmm. the ps4 you know library right as part of the functionality of this yeah you just device. don't get the updated version i guess right smart delivery gives you like the updated version maybe and there's I mean, like a system where you can pay to upgrade the games to get better graphics that kind of but thing but even if not right, think, about, think about what it's like on like 3ds versus ds right you can put a ds cart in a 3ds and play it you can put a game boy advance game in your ds and play it right and Phys physically yeah 100 percent. it's this the digital is the big question yeah. i think because our libraries have never moved with us from consoles through, uh, through a network no. Uh, the only way you could do it, I think you could transfer it from the Wii to the Wii U, but you physically had to have the Wii and the Wii U, right? And you could move everything that was installed yeah, on that console you could over. Do that. 
but there needs to be a case where I log in and I can just download them in the same way that it is right now. If I go and buy a new Switch, I can log in with my Nintendo ID. To me, that's and... what this sounds like, right? Like, I, I feel yeah. like I, I feel like that's I'm right there with Sierra, where like it feels like that's what he is hinting at, right? Is like, yeah. like especially with the the context of saying like, as for the transition to the next generation machine, we want to do it as as smoothly as possible. With utilize while utilizing the Nintendo account, to me that sounds like I buy whatever the Switch. We'll call it the Switch Two for the sake of the the argument right now. I buy my Switch Two. I log in, and I should be able to just like I can on my PS Five, right? Like I logged in on there, and I have all my PS Four games are in my library. I can re-download yeah. them, and that's that, right? Like, but but, but it doesn't it still doesn't have full backwards compatibility. You know, I've got PS Three games on my on my net PlayStation account. I can't download them on my PS5 and play them because the PS5 doesn't support PS3. I think there's I th think for the most part they're going to try and make games as backwards compatible as possible. But whether it's 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 feasible for every single game to run on the on the next generation system on the mm. Switch 2 that plays on the current Switch, I think is another question that needs answering. I do think we're going to have our account move over, our friends list move over, our cloud save for the games that are supported move over. But I don't know that full backwards compatibility has been confirmed by this statement anyway. I wouldn't say it's being confirmed, but I don't know. What, what do you think about that, Sierra? Because like, I feel like with the PlayStation 3 thing, that feels like a whole other wrinkle, right? Like the idea that the PS5 can't play games that the PS4 was backwards compatible with like doesn't feel like too crazy to me. Whereas like the idea mm. of going from Switch to whatever comes next, that feels like more of a straight line. I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. I feel like it, you know, it's a logical next step. And like, I think that, it, I mean, in, in my perfect little world, that's what I envision. Like, I can play all my Switch games on like whatever comes next. Um, cause I know that it's been like seven, eight years, but like it, I don't know. I don't know if it's because of the way time moved for all of us in the last like seven <laughs> sure. or so years, but like it doesn't really feel like it's been that long. Um, I feel like there's still so much potential for like the switch like as a concept so like i don't know i think at the very least you know they know that the switch has been uber successful they want to like replicate that success for whatever comes next so logically like whatever happens now will be have to be like a super smooth transition because people like convenience and i know it's nintendo we should not put things <laughs> past Nintendo. Uh, but, like, I feel like it's in their best interest to, like, make that user experience, like, very seamless. Like, because target audience for this console is people who are not always inherently gamers. Like, you know, thinking about that customer base and, like, how a lot of people might lose their minds if, like, if the thing that comes next, it looks like a Switch, but it's, like, super complicated to set up and a much different uh experience i don't know so i think i don't know I feel I'm, like, I'm optimistic but cautiously optimistic <laughs> i feel like what you just said there makes me think too like that i feel like that feels like less of a bite for somebody who bought a switch recently right if it's like oh like it's it's the next one and all your games are going to transfer right over and like there's maybe a year or two where the new games still come out and still work on your old switch. And like, you don't feel like you bought obsolete tech, right? Like yeah. the year tears of the kingdom came out or whatever, right? Maybe you just got it and it's new to you or you've only had it for two or three years. Right. And it's, you got it during the pandemic. Like a lot of people did. Right. Like, and right. you know, maybe, I don't know. Like, I feel like that encourages the folks like us that are hungry for something new to be like, yeah, I'm ready to go jump over. But the folks who our late adopters can feel like, oh, like I can keep engaging in this ecosystem and buying new stuff and it's all going to come with me whenever I decide it's time to upgrade. And like, yeah. the, like you said, the normies are like, you're, you're trained for that because you own a phone, right? Like mm -hmm. that's how your phone works. Yeah, it's like how Apple devices work. So yeah. you get the next number and all your stuff moves over and that's that. Yeah. I think from a technical perspective, though, those things are a bit different in the same way that the PS4 and the PS5 and the Xbox to the uh, Xbox One to the series consoles were, were different. They used the same architecture, the mm -hmm. same chips. It was a simple, this one's just more powerful than the last one, but it's the exact same architecture. And we don't really need to recompile the games. We don't need to do anything with it technically. I think for this to potentially work, 
they are either going to need to have some kind of emulation layer or transpilation layer, similar to how Proton works over on the Steam Deck and on Steam OS, where it takes the code that was running on the original Switch and is like, okay, it needs to run like this on the new Switch, or recompile the games. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that it will be 100% compatible. I really hope it will be, but from a technical perspective, I don't know if it is feasible without some hard work. And I would imagine Nintendo and NVIDIA have the incentive to put the hard work in. They've got hundreds of millions of customers who want to bring over all of their games and all of their accounts and will probably be more incentivized to buy one if on day one they have a huge library of games they can go back to and play like Tears of the Kingdom, but I can now play at 60 frames per second, like a boost mode, or it looks better, or whatever it may be. People people want that. As much as I think we have in one, on one um, core, it's, well, the games really need to look amazing. Do they need to look good when they play as well as Tears of the Kingdom does? It's enjoyable as it is. But I do want it to play as well as possible. And if I can pay for a new console to have it play at double the frame rate or double the resolution, then I will probably do that on day one. I, I think whatever comes next is probably going to be a day one purchase for, for me anyway. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of locked in at this point, you know? Like, uh, the current console manufacturers, anyway, it would have to burn me for me to not want to show up, you know, for what comes next. Um, but particularly with Nintendo, I love the Switch. So the idea of, like, hey, the Switch, the next generation, whatever we're going to call it, right? Like, um, I'm already intrigued by that, you know, out the gate. Yeah. Imagine, you... like, sorry. No, I was no, going to no, imagine no. they blow our absolute minds and it really is not another switch. It's something completely different beyond our comprehension. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So I'm going to pull that. This uh, is a question we had from uh, Andrew Valentine over on the Discord who said, What's the likelihood of Nintendo doing something a bit Nintendo and having their next hardware be a traditional home console? With an upgraded switch becoming the de facto handheld, do you, do we do we think that's a realistic possibility? No, I don't think so. No, I don't. I think I think the hybrid console has been too successful for them. Like, never say never. Right? Yeah, they do crazy shit all the time. But like, I don't know. I just feel like they changed the way they did development, right? Like they they changed kind of like the whole structure of the business to orient towards one system to like buy in on this like vision of the hybrid you know um console future and it's been so unbelievably successful for them i feel like the move is to double down not to be like all right let's let's go to the drawing board all over again right like i know i get where the question is coming from for sure because it's like what do they change now <laughs> if the switch yeah. is so perfect as is what changes? Like, what can you change? Um, can't fuck with the formula of success, right? So, uh. Uh, there's very little to change. I think they need to just make it more powerful. Yeah, they just need and to fix Joy-Con drift, and they've got me, and then fine. I'm like, <laughs> you've solved the two problems. <laughs> it's like that's what you got to do. No issue uh. there, just fine. And do you know yeah. what? I, I I'd be fine if it was, you know, that thing that was rumored at the beginning of the switches, uh, like rumor mill. Whereas, like, oh, the dock's going to make it do stuff. stuff. It's going to be, like, more powerful yeah, on the TV because cool. the dock's going to have something in there. If they want to make it more like a traditional home console where it's more powerful because it can draw more power or whatever, then do something like that. But I still want to be able to take all my games on the go. I don't want to go back to, I can only play Zelda on my TV because I've yeah. played the majority of Tears of the Kingdom lying on the sofa or in bed. I've not played it on the TV, and I want to be able to continue to explore all of Nintendo's universes wherever I am. And I just, I, I wouldn't want to see them go back to trying to support two devices because you saw how that played out, right? Like, every Nintendo console after the handheld started being the most successful, excuse me, part of their business, there was software drought after a while, right? Like, you look at the Wii, and the last couple of years that the Wii was on the market, it had, like, very few major releases, you know? And at least for me personally, like, even as a big Nintendo fan, like, it became a Smash machine. Like, I turned it on to play Brawl when my friends were over, and otherwise I was pretty much not touching it, you know? Um, with the odd game here or there. And obviously the Wii U, like, you know, as, as many great games as there are on the Wii U, it struggled, I think, to 
have enough output to seem like it could keep up with the other two you know consoles it was supposed to be competing with and like the switch has never had that problem right we were just talking about like this direct just uh confirmed that this is the second time this console generation that they were able to put a zelda and a mario out in the same year there's five mario games out on this thing in the in this in the next 18 months right like there's been how many pokemon games we've gotten two major zeldas we've you know like we've we've gotten almost everything they've played almost every card there is to play and you know like it's it's been awesome to have you know uh even on a slow year on the switch was better than some of the best years on the wii and the wii u when it comes to first party core franchise stuff so like i don't really i feel like they would be foolish to to split their energy at this point because like i feel like such a big part of the switch's success is having a library of games that you can ignore and that never go down in price mm -hmm. what if it's like a situation where the consoles are basically the same but one's running at half frame rate and resolution and it's the handheld version and then the home console is like 60 frames per second 4k what all the what the other consoles are targeting and so they don't need to make two versions of the same game the same game can run on both i can put the cartridge into both it's completely the, the exact same experience it's just one of them can run it better than the other maybe i think the thing that you said about the dock is like a compelling thing i could see that maybe being the thing where it's like you buy the switch 2 or whatever and it's the handheld that we know and rather than it coming with a dock the base console is a dockless experience and it's more powerful and that makes up for the price disparity of like not including the dock and all those extra little things right um and it costs about i could the see same. that you know and you know how you phones make... don't come with charges anymore sure it would be like oh you've got already got a dock but you can also buy this new one which makes it more powerful yeah but you'll get the base experience anyway at home mm -hmm. with your current dock because you've already got a switch and then you buy the dock that provides the you know it's like an external mm -hmm. gpu situation and that's like the more you know home console experience and that does 4k 60 fps you know and even if it's upscaled, but like you get that kind of experience that we've come to expect on, you know, modern consoles. And then the base handheld experience is just kind of a slightly souped up version of what we already know. Well, the rumor was it was going to use NVIDIA's DLSS and stuff, right? So I could easily see that we'll get up to 1080p 4K up res. Um, whether that's in the base experience or not, I don't know. It's exciting though. I I I feel like after the last direct, that really seemed like laying all their cards on the table. This is what we got, right? And I was surprised after that. And I and I know you spoke about it last week. I was surprised that this wasn't like a in E three or in Summer Game Fest. I mean, it was. And they were basically saying, though, right? Is that that's yeah, but what they it were like saying any that, other year. But they said they were pulling out of E three because they didn't have anything to show, right? That was a they lie. Pulled out <laughs> uh, yeah, quite clearly a lie. It's like uh, I'm so jealous of anyone that can get to Seattle later this year to be able to play some of these games that are like the Nintendo Live thing, because it's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be so cool to be able to to see those those games before they come out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm I'm hoping they do it again next year. I kind of want to go. Get all the East Coast folks, you know. Sarah, are you trying to? Yeah, trying to, you trying to go to Seattle? Like, <laughs> I would love to. All right, please, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. I if they, if they do it again I... next year, we'll figure it out. Yeah, every time I always want to go to a gaming event like PAX East. Every year it tees up on me because it's I not directly after the holidays, it. but it feels like, like it's just when, like, just when I finally recover from Christmas, introducing expensive gaming convention that all your friends are going to <laughs> and you can't. So. <laughs> And then, like, too many games, like, happened under my nose. I was like, what? That was this past weekend? Like, <laughs> sick of missing everything. I would love to go to Seattle and go to, like, a Nintendo event. So, it's not off the table. I am thinking about it. I will think about it. All right, look. So, PAX, it looks like PAX is usually in Q1, Sierra. And it was, it was, it was in Boston last year. So, I mean. Yeah, which is not far for us. No, we could do it. We can make this happen. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we got to make this happen. Zade would be very excited if we went to Boston. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we love that. 
Especially if Persona's there, right? I would imagine if it's in Q1, you're going to have Persona, Persona 3 and, and uh, that and stuff on the show floor. What a time to be alive, you know? Yeah. All right. So, okay. You know, we got a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. A lot of people wrote in on this subject. We're going to talk more about this next console. But before that, let me remind you that this episode of Nintendo Noise is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of June. For the last time, they are Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Earth Visitor, Gabriel Hasmeyer, a.k.a. Sobe, Snackago, Ty the Dude, and Wakahula. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash games. Y'all are the reals to the real, and we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows. If you want to get involved just like they did, get your name read on the air, get the show early, get a bunch of other perks and goodies over on Patreon.com slash games. guess what? You can head over there. But if you don't have any money for us, head over to flipscreen.games. That's our website where you will find links to our Discord, our email address, and you can write into the show just like everybody else did for this week's Question Block and Beyond. And of course, there's links to our other shows and all the other places that we are all over the web. So however, however you want to get involved with us, that is the best place to go. Again, it's flipscreen.games. That's the website. Go over there and click on some stuff. It helps us out a lot, and it doesn't cost, cost you a pretty penny. So, all right, this question comes from none other than Andrew Valentine yet again, who wrote in with some bangers this week. This question is, pick your top three new features you want to see brought to Nintendo accounts slash NSO. And we'll say that can be a, as part of the new console, right? You move over to the next generation. We're going to get some new functionality, some new features. What are the, what are the features you want to see with Nintendo accounts? Usernames. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> one. that would be a good one yeah just add by username and remove the 12 digit code I, especially because yeah. i it, it's made my friends list like unusable you know because like i have people who like you know like mom there's some... dad <laughs> like, <laughs> I have, you know no genuinely when when i was playing um splatoon 3 i had so many like mom dad accounts pop up on there and it was friends who just changed their names to that as like a joke to make it seem like they were crap at the game or whatever. I can't remember what the name for that was. Chewy told me there was a name for people who pretend to be crap, but they're actually really good or something. Oh, Smurfs? <laughs> yeah, Smurfs. That's it. Yeah, yeah you, you make so a I, second I, account I, so that you can... I think uh, they were just can... Smurfing. Yeah, but you don't even need to make a second account because you can just change your name to Mum. No problem, <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> They've discovered a hack. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Go go ahead, Sarah. Baconator like has all of mine. Like looking at the the doc. Yeah, go ahead, read it. Uh, themes, trophies, and a better NSW where you can talk without any external apps. Like the the party management system is so shit. It is so shit. It, I think Nintendo has like used it in two of their games. Um. Those are just all no brainers that like increase engagement with the console. Um, I mean, it gets a lot as it is. It's, 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 they're doing great, but like those are things that are commonplace on other like units, like other consoles. Like yeah, right. Like we, we've had achievements and trophies for two generations already, right? And it's like I Nintendo. mean, themes in the past on Nintendo handhelds. There were great themes on the 3DS, and they're just like, nah, forget it. You got two options. You don't want that, surely? <laughs> yes, we I do. Don't, I don't... I don't know if they're ever coming back. I mean, the PlayStation binned them off as well this generation, which was a real no. shame because they they used to have really great themes. They would change the icons and the music yeah. and everything. It was really cool. Yeah, like, and you would get them work. as like pre order bonuses if you like pre ordered. I had like, like an Uncharted <laughs> one for a long time. At least on the PS5, they did it in the name of like we're simplifying it so that we can make the overall design more visual, right? Like it's like seventy five percent of of any screen is just like a graphic now and like showing you. Yeah you know oh you're on final fantasy like it's the final fantasy image and it's music like it's it's trying mm -hmm. to make it more immersive like per page and like fair enough like i like themes i miss themes but at least that feels like it's like in service of design where like this is like i get the super clean simple interface i very much appreciate that right but we like, could have changed the colors or the icons yeah. or the sounds, though. Like, like, do it. Even if you bit. don't want to give us music, you could have done any of that. It would have been fine. I could still see them coming. You know how we got Bluetooth audio like four years into the Switch's life cycle. <laughs> it was just like, 
oh shit, we can listen to things yes. with Bluetooth headphones now. Great. So I could I could see it coming. I I don't care about any of those though. I would love usernames, Discord, because Discord's come to both of the other consoles now. So just don't bother making your own system. Everyone uses Discord. Just let me have my Discord friends and yeah, party up with them and do that and use that through the Switch. But think of um, the children, Steve. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else I would I would really really care about on Switch Online. Really, it's just those two things. Oh, Twitch! Twitch streaming would be cool. The uh, people to be able to just stream yeah! from their from their Switch console without having anything else to set up is a great gateway yeah. to into streaming. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I'm kind of with you. You know, I think aside from that, like I wouldn't mind if they wanted to bring back like some of the like kind of goofy social functionality that they had on like stuff like the Wii, like oh, I, the Miiverse. Yeah, like I thought that kind of stuff was, like <laughs> was cute. You know, like if they wanted to do something like that, where it was like, um, I don't know, like you know how on um, the Switch's like friends page, they do a big thing of like these are the games your friends have been playing, and you know. You know, so, you know, uh, Pete's put over 100 hours into Tears of the Kingdom lately. And, like, you know, like, it, it gets kind of into some of that stuff. I think it would be cool if they took some of the, like, data functionality that is on the Nintendo Switch um, app and brought it to that page. So, yeah. like, just, like, more, like, social stuff, you know? And, and it doesn't have to be anything, like, crazy. I don't want to, I don't need to have, like, a Facebook wall for my Nintendo Switch account or whatever. Um, But, like, it would be cool to see... You know, and this would tie into the whole achievement thing or like trophies or whatever you want to call it, right? Like some kind mm -hmm. of system like that. Um, it would be neat to be able to see, like, oh, you know, like so and so just a hundred percented, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, right? Or like, oh, like they got all the Koroks, or like, oh, they just, you know, Chewie just passed five million, you know, splat kills or what you know, just like yeah. stuff, little things like that would be cool, or like just kind of giving you more of that incentive to go maybe check out like aspects of a game you hadn't like, maybe you don't play the multiplayer of this game that much and you want, and then you were inspired to go check it out or, Oh, you know, so-and-so just, you know, hundred percent at all the new Mario Kart uh, tracks. Oh, I haven't played those yet. Like, why don't I go check that out? Like, yeah, just give you some more yeah, things is... like that. And then being able to that... comment on people's achievements <laughs> and game activity, or like give it a thumbs up or, you know, something like that where you, you know, you could give them like I a little shout out. I want my me to do poses like in Mitomo. That would be oh, great. Yeah. Go over to the house <laughs> and stuff. But no, that's one thing I actually do like from the Xbox. I don't really keep track of achievements myself and I've never been one that like chased the platinums or whatever. But I do like comparing achievements with other people to see what they've been doing, what I've been doing in the game, like in Hitman, I can see oh, what levels they're good at, what levels I'm I'm like lagging on, that kind of thing. I always think that's quite fun. So yeah, some social elements would be cool. If if we're talking about Switch Online though, like is that the pay, the paid service we're talking about? Like I want more DLC to come to the expansion pack. I feel like that was a real that seems to be a real real pain point. It's like we've had yeah. what, two three dlcs come to that most we we should really be having every dlc come in at least like a, a year later like just chuck it on yeah i think i think it's consistency across all of the nso things that would be my my number one change is just like i think i don't necessarily think that what's offered is a bad value prop i think it's like the expansion pack is becoming a, a worse deal over time because they're not adding enough to it I think when it came out, it was like fine. Like if you were gonna go play the Animal Crossing DLC already, right? Like that was cool. Um, there was a decent library of games that came to the N sixty four and and the Game Boy Advance, the other stuff that was behind the paywall. But like, they don't. There's no cadence of those things, right? If it was like you're gonna get a guarantee of four DLCs a year, or you're gonna get a guarantee of like one new game is gonna come to every single you know, platform that we had. And it, there's going to be one NES, one SNES, like right across um, and down. Then I think I'd, I'd be more excited about it. And I'd be more eager to like talk about it as a good value. Cause right now I think it's, it's Just skirted a by, by when it happens affordable. Like, we're, we're too, like a couple of weeks ago, we had some new games come. And it was like, Oh, 
they're adding new games to and the they just NES added, still. They just so added like, a, new fi- a new Fire Emblem from the GBA library, right? But again, it's like that just random. Like it's just, it's out, right? Like it's not because this is the, you know, like that's what PlayStation is like, right? That's what Games with Gold on Xbox is like, right? Like, you know, I'm going to get two games and they're going to come on this date and I have until then to, to claim them. And that's yeah. that's how it works. And I think you need something like that that you can build excitement around rather than it just feeling like, whenever they decide that they want to put something on it, they just shadow drop something, you know? Mm -hmm. Or like, I don't know, some other kind of thing, like Steve said, where it was maybe like after a certain amount of time, like, you know, games come to it or DLC comes to it. And it could be, that could be like, with the Nintendo like classics selection, right? When they, which they oh my didn't God, do on yeah, Switch. Bring those back, the they, Nintendo they, they totally never did that on Switch because these yeah. games do not come down in price. But if they were to do something like that again, you know, it could be like, hey, like Breath of the Wild is now a eight year old game and Tears of the Kingdom is coming out and or it's out now. Right. And now you can play this as part of it. Right. Like those would be cool things, I think, to make it feel more valuable and something that could like expose new like people who are new to the switch to new games and you know i think what it does right now is just so unexciting even if you do get use out of it right like i don't i don't think there's there's a much fanfare around it and i think it there could be you know and like the virtual console was so cool and this feels like such a step back from what we had just a couple generations mm. ago yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, the one thing that I will keep paying for is the cloud saves. That's all I really care about at this point. I'm not really playing any multiplayer games, but I don't want if something goes bad, you know, with my Switch that I lose all my saves. So yeah. they got me on that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we're all locked in now. Everything is moving to digital primarily. Like, every like a lot of users are, like, skipping out and buying carts. So, like, it'll be important more now than ever to like preserve that and like i i am a fan of like i hate paying for things but i will also do whatever is the best precautionary move so yeah <laughs> and like if they could build other quality of life functionality into it like that where it was like i don't know i, mean, I don't know what that looks like right well the but... place the playstation tried that this generation and i don't think it's caught on you know the they showed the the whole walkthroughs thing and the developers and you could skip to certain points and it was like you only got like a playstation plus and you can click and it will take mm. you to a certain point in the game with the yeah, activity like nobody does it. no Cards, one does it no, no one cares about it yeah but no one cared about it right i think you've got to find something that is an intrinsic value that people is just like that's a no-brainer like cloud saves it's like Oh, I don't want my switch to break, and if it does break, I don't want to lose all my saves. I want to be able to get them back, and pay them for that. People will pay for it. it; gives them peace of mind. And I think the the uh, the emulator games is is a great. It's fine. It seems like we're never going to get GameCube to come there with the Pikmin one and two announcements. Uh, seemingly, we're going to pay full price for every single one of those games that comes, which is a shame as well because it would have been nice to have that next step. To GameCube, but I don't think that's ever going to happen now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I uh... think stuff like that is, like, frustrating, because I, I I don't know. I don't really feel... I feel like it ends up with a worse product for, for both of us, right? Because it's like, I feel like you want to have... You want to have the original versions for people that want to play the original and, like, have that faithful experience. Like, I don't think that makes remakes or, or remasters or anything less valuable. I think you just have to work harder to make them valuable. And I don't think they want to do that. You know, it's like they could put Pikmin 1 and 2 as, you know, a, a nice quality HD port and be like, cool, there you go. That's a release. And we don't have to do anything, right? Whereas, like, I would rather see them go, like, the Metroid remastered, Metroid Prime remastered route, where it is, like, it feels newer. It feels fresher, right? Like, yeah. and you have such a weird var- like array of that type of game from Nintendo. Cause like we have like the Skyward Sword thing and the Pikmin thing where it is just like a direct port, but then you do have the more, you know, mid tier remaster. And then they have like the full remakes, like we got with Link's Awakening and, but like we're getting a, a more mid tier remaster with Luigi's Mansion too. And, you know, so it's like, it feels like very much whatever serves them at that moment is kind of what they're going to do. And I guess I don't blame them for wanting to 
keep that flexibility and being able to maximize the return on their portfolio. But like, I, I want to have easy access to the the classic library, you know? And I think that's yeah. like an easy, consistent thing that every Nintendo fan wants. And it's and, and they always get driven to download in Dolphin and find in a game somewhere mm -hmm. because it's not easily accessible. And that sucks, you know? I think people probably picked up Pikmin 1 and 2 when Pikmin 3 came to to the Switch. But why did they wait until Pikmin 4 was coming out to bring those games over? I know. We had to wait so long for Metroid Fusion to come to the Switch after Metroid Dread. But they were like giving us spoilers for the game on Twitter. It was like, here's what you missed in that game because you kind of need the story to really understand what happened in Metroid Dread. Why don't you just put the game on there? We all know you had Game, game Boy emulation ready. You could have just released the thing, but you didn't. You wanted to hold on to it until people had to re-up on the subscriptions. And it yeah. sucks. Like That's the side of Nintendo that everyone hates, the, the corporate side where it's like you can see that these are decisions made to just make money and not for the good of the customer. And I, and I ha always hate that. The, I think the reason it bothers me so much with Nintendo specifically and it is that they have so much goodwill and so much like like the average nintendo fan right like who's like a fan right who advertises themselves as being a nintendo fan will spend so much money on this stuff it's like just <laughs> like decide what the price point is and then just just gi give it to me right like it's really frustrating to feel strung along to like keep me on a hook when it's like bro i'm on the hook like just make the bait worth it you know like i'm gonna give you the money just you know it's like yeah I, like you don't need to give me these dumb time like oh yeah here's a tr this ridiculous trickle i think it would be so much more attractive to just be like it's like something like game pass right where like the value is so obvious that of course i don't cancel it right of course i let it run run for another year because why wouldn't i well, Jim Ryan said to the FTC this week, the publishers don't like Game Pass, so maybe that's why Nintendo won't do it. But but with this, it would just be their own games. Like, if you just get, I know. Yeah, give I know. me and every that's what Nintendo published I, game. That's and I want it all in one app as well. Why does it need to be in, like, four separate apps? And I have to remember yeah. what what app, what co what console was that on? Was it on the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, the NES, the NES, <laughs> N64? Where was it? I need to remember. Yeah, exactly I don't like the UI is. of that. It's really it's annoying. So weird. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, how yeah. nice would it be if it was just like, you know, the virtual console app or whatever, right? And you click in and then it's like organized by console or by character. Or I can just search. Yeah. I want to find Yeah, every Mario instead game. of just like, open this, search. Oh, nope close open this and you wait and you wait <laughs> yeah yeah they're very i love when you go back in there after like six months you've not you've not been on there for a while it's like you've got some new games and you have to turn every single one of them that's sucks. Them. i know it's to sucks. find out so which game much. it is what sad fucker at hq thought this was a delightful <laughs> idea <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All right, so this this, uh, this next question comes from that doc guy over in the Discord. He said, "With Mister Furukawa specifically mentioning the next Nintendo console, do you think there's going to be an announcement next year?" I recall Nintendo saying they have nothing in the pipeline for this year, but next year is on the table. And I I think this is interesting because this is a question I feel like we've been asked the last like three weeks in a row, and my answer has changed every <laughs> week because it was like before the direct, I'm like, I don't know, maybe like. Never. And then it's like after the direct, it's like, well, good. I think you no, I think he said when when I was going away, I think he said I could see them doing something like they did with the NX, where they said it was in, in the development. Yeah. They've already done that with Twitter, with the with that with that um translated post on, on Twitter, right? With that in that QA. They've confirmed that the next generation console exists and they are gonna make the transition seamless. So we've already had that. Sure. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be announced. So I don't think it's going to be this year. I do think it will be next year. But, you know, there's so many things, right? There was that thing from the Ubisoft CEO, Yves Gilmont, uh, talking about how he, he wished it, he could have waited to put out the new Mario Rabbids game on the next console. Let me, let me, let me give the folks that quote. So this, this came uh, in the context of, and this is Ubisoft CEO, Yves Gilmont, if you're not familiar, uh, was 
speaking on Mario plus Rabbids sparks of hope and expressed that he had regretted releasing it on switch and not saving it for the console successor. And this was the quote I thought was relevant. He said on Nintendo games like this never die. There are 25 Mario games on switch Nintendo. Uh, and there's a couple like added it. It's doing that thing, right? Where it's a sick quote where like someone was speaking and they're, they're speaking the way people speak. Right. So there's a few added words. Just want to give you that context there. Um, but he said, Nintendo has advised that it's better to do one iteration on each machine. We were a bit too early. We should have waited for the next console. So that makes it sound like the next console is imminent, right? You're not going to sit on a finished game for several years, right? I don't know. Nintendo does that, seemingly. <laughs> mm. Yep. Um, I mean, true. but it's strange. They don't take their own advice, right? And Tears of the Kingdom has been an absolute slam dunk success probably going to outsell breath of the wild at least to the pace of breath of the wild so it's, it's strange but maybe mario is different and they are waiting for the next 3d mario mario odyssey 2 or whatever it may be to be on the next console i think that's the thing though a direct sequel to a game is different than here's the next one but that's this was a direct sequel mario rabbit's box of hope was a direct sequel to mario You're rabbit's right. So I, I I don't know. I think he's just like clutching at straws that his game didn't sell very well. They changed a lot of things. <laughs> up. So by all accounts, it was a good game, but it released close to other titles, right? That's Julie right. was playing that around Xenoblade, I think it was. was yeah. The game that In he last was playing July. at the same time. Oh, yeah. stop. Wait. Has it almost been a year since Xenoblade? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it, it was released. At, it was released at a bad time, and maybe that's on Nintendo because I think they published it. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I also think there's a, there was the interesting point about Persona Three that that's not coming or it's not been announced for Switch yet, and I don't think it's going to. I don't know why because Persona Five came to Switch, Persona Five Royal, and it's seemingly game. it's the seemingly it's the same engine though, right? And it's like Persona yeah, Three and the Persona Five engine. I don't think that's the right way to think about it, though. Because, I mean, granted, you're right. It was Royal that came to Switch, but the original Persona 5 was developed for the PS3, right? So, like, yeah, I think it's a lot less of a lift to make that game run on Switch than it is to make a game that, yeah, is in the same style, but, like, I feel like it's probably going to be more akin to, like, 60 FPS, 4K, like, just higher yeah, resolution, higher frame rate. Yeah, I think so, but I think they rate. probably could have done it at 30 FPS, 720p if they really wanted to. Maybe. But I, I, I could see that coming to the next console, and that, that being one be of true. the headline announcements with the next console. It's like, we've got Persona. These games fall right at home on a handheld, and that's where you really want to play it. Come yep. play it on Switch. Come play it on Switch could 2. Be. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is an interesting... That is an interesting question. Um, and it actually takes me to something I wanted to uh, bring to y'all's attention. So um, this past week, Rob Fahey over at uh, gamesindustry.biz wrote an op-ed that was called Nintendo Direct Introduces the Switch, the Switch's Sunset Slate. And it's kind of talking about the concept of this Direct being the last major Direct and these being kind of the last big slate of Switch games before we move on to whatever comes next. And he, he made a couple points that I thought were interesting. Uh, this, this first quote is, the challenge for, the, for Nintendo Direct's format right now is the same as the challenge for Nintendo more broadly. How do you communicate with players about the software pipeline when behind the scenes, more and more of that pipeline is being diverted towards a console you haven't started talking about yet? And I, I think that that's an interesting question, Steve, is like, is a game like that not coming to Switch because the Switch can't, do it or is it not coming to switch because it's coming to whatever the switch 2 is and nintendo isn't ready to announce it or maybe these developers aren't even aware of it because i don't know how much they've talked to other people about it because you'd think that 100 percent. i think there's dev kits out there you know there was there was seemingly dev kits out there for that mid-gen refresh that digital right. foundry said in december was cancelled and they shifted mm -hmm. the focus to this next gen version I think there's probably dev kits out there. If this is gonna, if we're expecting this to be announced and released next year, which I think is where we're kind of landing. I mean, it could be that we're we're completely off the mark and it's 2025 or 2026. Yeah. I, I really hope it's not. I really think it's getting to a point where, I mean, I mean, maybe the Princess Peach game that's coming next year is enough to kind of tide them over and and ride and the, the wave. The Luigi's until... Mansion remake is coming. They've got you know. Yeah. 
they have they have a few things uh, in the pipeline, um, but not a ton. I mean, obviously, there's Metroid Prime Four, right? But oh, that's it's just those three. I, 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 yeah. That's one of those games I think could be one of the launch titles. So we get a Mario game, and we do that. We do that launch window thing that they did with a new game every month that they did with the original Switch. It's like you start with Metroid Prime Four, you get in the real like gamer people. You do a new Mario game. Maybe Mario Kart 9's announced, and you go down that route, and I think you have like a, a real win that way. Yeah. Um, new Pokemon I mean, game I could, will be yeah, out. Could, yeah, right? new like, Pokemon that's, game. I, I, mean, I can easily see the, the Princess Peach game and the Luigi's Mansion game are on the next Switch, and they're not ready to announce dates or times or what it is yet. Maybe. This is going to be a, a title for the next console, yeah. but it might also run on the Switch. I mean, again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of expecting it to be, but fully backwards compatible at this point. I feel like whatever the new Switch, new like, this is hard to, this is hard to say when we don't know what that game is called. I think whatever future Nintendo Switch games come out should theoretically be playable on the next console. Yeah, so but I think yeah. the other way around. They can always like, announce all, that after the fact, like, oh, and also that game we announce is playable on the new one. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a great point. They could they could reveal that game and tell us all about it well before they confirm that it plays on these on this other mm -hmm. console and mm -hmm. I, I to answer your question steve i don't think it would be the other way around i think whatever the switch 2 games are won't run on the previous switch and it will be there's a hard line for that upgrade but i think it'll be the same thing we saw on for the last year and change on ps4 and ps5 and on xbox series x and xbox one right where it's like yeah like God of War and Horizon Forbidden West are ostensibly PS5 games. You can play them on PS4, right? It's a lesser experience, but they're playable there. Or like games like Elden Ring, right? Which is like, that came out on PS4. That's not a PS5 game, but everybody played it on next-gen consoles, right? And a lot of people's that, yeah. opinions of it is based on the next-gen console version. So I imagine it would be something like that, where, yeah, maybe there's a couple big games that still come out, quote-unquote, on Switch, like the new uh, Peach game, the, you know, Luigi's Mansion remake, uh, maybe Metroid Prime 4 is, like, cross-gen situation. Who knows? But, you know, I don't think that that precludes the idea that... Because, I, I, again, right, like, these are the only three games we know that are coming up, right? All these other games that they announced. And they announced a ton of games. They're all coming out this year. Why? Why I know, are they yeah, which coming I think, out this year? I, I think that Sunset Slate that, that Rob said makes sense because it's like we're clear in the decks. We're clearing it all out for next year. These are the games we've got for next year. But away we go. But we didn't think we were getting anything else this year. We thought it was going to be Zelda, Pikmin, Rod the year out until next year. But there then were three yeah. whole games that they announced that we had never heard of that are coming out this fall. We yeah. didn't know of each other. Yeah, I know. It's mental. And like, yeah, it's one month after another. Two in the same month. I mean, we didn't really know about Detective Pikachu Returns. I think we all thought no. that was cancelled. Yeah, you, I think you could count that as a fourth game that they kind of re-revealed, but like yeah. technically we had seen it before, right? So mm. whatever. But even so, I'm 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 right there with you. Yeah, because anything for holiday, they're probably going to talk about it this summer if it comes out, and it's it wasn't in the direct, but. I think that's it. But they also can't, they won't be able to talk about anything new. They probably wouldn't announce anything this year at all, especially not during the holidays because they're probably going to try to just squeeze what they can. That was, yeah, that yeah. was my point on, They've on only the yeah. last episode. To, to yeah. Sell. Yeah. They're not going to want to put, more, like, literally think about, I mean, again, Tears of the Kingdom is still going to be selling, right? Um, Pikmin 4 is out in, for July and that's going to be the summer game. And then in the fall, they have from, I mean, there's the physical release of Pikmin in September, but then from October to November, it's those four releases, two of which are really huge games, you know, and like WarioWare is no slouch, but like Mario, um, what is it? I can't remember it yet. Mario Wonder. Wonder and and yeah. then my, I, I mean, I don't really care about that. Mario RPG was like a massive thing for me. Like I've, I've never You're played You're an insane game. person to say that you don't one care about a new 2D play. Mario and a new art style. Like the first them. one they're in like too, 18 years. They're too years hard. They're way too hard for oh me. My God. I, I tried new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, and I was like, oh, this is... Kids got no like, game. No game. I just want to <laughs> bounce around in Mario. Yeah, I, I don't care. I'm not afraid to. Steve, I'm I get you. Video games. 
Well, whatever. Either way, both of them are huge yeah. releases, right? Oh, and, so. and also more DLC coming for, for the Pokemon games, and we've got more DLC coming for um, Mario, and they've no doubt going to roll out that Black Friday bundle like they've done for the last six years again. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so I, I agree with you, Sierra. I don't think there's any way that we're going to hear about this console this year. <laughs> no. I, I, again, I, I think maybe a tease. Right, maybe in December, right? Like after, you know, that could be a game. Oh, I can see it. Maybe at the game awards. Yeah. yeah. That is so true. Yeah. And again, even if they don't show it, I could see them being like, we have more for you next year, like that kind of thing. And then be like, here's a trailer for the new Peach game, right? Something like that. And it's like, okay, here's something new. And now we're going to talk to you in a couple months. I could see that, you know? Yeah. It's like, I wonder when this is going to release, because if it is next year, is it like early next year? Do they want to do what they did with the Switch and put it out in like March and let it have a year to marinate and they have a bunch of games to put out on it? Or is it like more of a later November. in the year? I think if it's backwards compatible, I think they can do later in the year. I think the problem the the Switch had was it was a completely new console with a completely new library and they needed to get people to buy it. So they had games to sell them later in the year. Whereas with the new Switch, they could check that thing out in November in the same way that the PS5 and the Series X got released. And everyone's already bought the games and they can just slot them in and or just log in with their Nintendo account, as Furukawa said, and away we go. I had a thought. What's the <laughs> what's the likelihood that imagine like they they do announce next gen in during the holiday seasons and then they finally slashed the price of the Switch, the original? Oh, Sierra, that's such a good call. They've never reduced the price. Can you imagine? Yeah. They, and, that, and then you're not worried about it eating into sales because it's not like, oh, why would I buy a Switch if there's a new one? It's like, well, the Switch is $150 now. Yeah, I'll buy it, right? Or whatever, right? Right, exactly. Maybe the people who are not going to give a shit are more likely to just buy shit. a cheaper Switch. That's a good point. Do you think they do a cut down version like they did with the Wii Mini? When we get like a new revision you, and the two DS You already XL. have the light though. I feel like you just do that. I feel like you make because what's the light cost now? Hundred and seventy nine, isn't it? Something yeah. Like that? So you bump that. And maybe this is aggressive, but like you bump that down to a hundred, and then you bump the switch, the regular switch, down to two hundred. The OLED is two fifty. Yeah, yeah. So it's officially one hundred and ninety nine. Good deal, 99. right? Like, yeah. What is it? What is it? It's, it's officially two hundred pounds. So I think it's two hundred dollars as well. But I've okay. seen them going from like anywhere from one fifty to one eighty. So maybe you bump no it. one's selling these things for full price. Maybe you bump it down to one fifty, right? Like, and that's the official price. So then it's one fifty two two fifty. I think that's a great that's a great Christmas gift then for kids mm -hmm. who maybe are now moving up from watching Peppa Pig on their Amazon tablet and they want to <laughs> play um they want to play Animal Crossing. I can yeah. see that. Or again, like, like, or it's the thing of like, maybe you already own a Switch and you want to get another one, like, you know, you, yeah. like all those things, right? Like the, the little kid doesn't necessarily need the, the new cutting edge Switch, but like maybe, you know, mom and dad want the new one and then oldest kid gets, you know, like the Switch moves down the, the line, right? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. I like when really my... like the Switch light. Like, have you ever, have you ever played with one that just feels no. so solid? Compared to like the Switch with the detachable Joy Cons, I, I do really and the like screens. Them. Yeah, and the screen's more crisp because it's a lot slightly smaller than the Switch's screen, so it's like more pixel dense. I really like them, and they they come in cute colors as well. I always like that, I know the uh, Pokemon one with the the gray one with the like pink buttons and the blue buttons. Yeah, yeah. so nice. They all come in pastels. I'm like, where's my pastel Switch? Like like regular Switch. I know. They don't have any with like a cool body color. Like there's the pastel no. Joy Cons now, but it's like I want like a pink back. Like you yeah, know? they did the red Mario one, but I think that was the only color switch they did, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, mm, there's the Breath of the Tears of the Kingdom one. That has a different. Is that is that a color body? I think so. Okay. I think so. What's it? Is it is it like an ugly gold color? Sorry, it's <laughs> pretty nice. I, I, in, in, <laughs> well, we, we talked smack about it before it came out, but my, my friend no, has it in real it life, and I was like, oh, it actually looks kind of cool, like, in person. Oh, okay, fair enough. I Yeah, I thought it looked so tacky with the, like, the in pictures. No, that one's black as well. 
So the yeah. only one I think they've done that is um is is it's actually red was the Mario Switch. Yeah. It was the Mario Special Edition console and it came with the like it was a red switch and it had like the blue, you know, the little dog face thing that you slide the Joy-Cons in. That was in blue, so when you put the red Joy Cons in it, it looked like Mario. Mario's overalls. It was really cool. Okay. So I mean, any any final thoughts on on this question, um, or I guess on on this topic overall of like what we're looking at here for this next switch? And I mean, if they could announce it tomorrow, ready for Christmas for me, that would be the, my dream. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, Your dream yeah. is for them to announce it a day late so that this entire pa- podcast comes out. If and you it's can totally announce obsolete. it. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I'd rather they announced it tomorrow and then we could like record a little bit before and be like, everything we just said, ignore it. But the new Switch is here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather they yeah. did that no, than, than, they re- than announce it Thursday when this goes out because we record this on Tuesday. Like, I'd rather they announced it tomorrow rather than Thursday. How about they announce it next Monday and then we can actually Next talk week about would it. be great. Yeah, that would be great. Next week would be great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. There you go. I could see them just dropping a tweet next next Monday. Switch 2, baby. It's out. See you later. That's how the OLED Switch got announced. It's like, here's another Switch. Have a look at this. That is true. All right. So we're going to wrap things up with a question from the question block. I'm going to pull two real quick because one of them is just for me, and it's a quick one. Uh, Andrew Valentine wrote in and said, Pete, how are you coping with the simultaneous release for Spider-Man 2 and Mario Wonder? What are you playing first? I got to be honest with you, Andrew. I'm going to I'm going to cry. It's going to be a really hard day for me, I think. Um, I think the move is going to be. Spider-Man. Hmm. I'm going to play Spider-Man, Spider-Man first and then play Mario yeah. after that. Probably. Mario's going to be uh, like a moose bush in between games. It's like, yeah, I'll quickly do a. Uh... I'll quickly do a round yeah. of, uh, on, on Mario Wonder. I'm going to have to do something like that. And I think the thing is, it'll be easy for me to to prioritize Spider-Man 2 and beat it. You know? It's probably not that long. And then, you know, then we can clear up the space for some of these other games. Mm-hmm. It's going to be devastating, though. It's going to be truly devastating. I'm going to be in the middle of Starfield. And they're going to pull me away to play two different games in my two of my favorite franchises. So it's tough oh, out here, God, but yeah. we're going to make it work. And then we're going to end it on Andrew's other question here. Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Wario, and Toad all have their own games. What does a Bowser series look like? Oh. I think this is a great question. If it's based on the movie, it's going to be a musical game. Because I feel like Bowser is quite a rhythm game. I was thinking a rhythm game. Holy shit. We don't really have like a, a rhythm game like like Wario Wear is like you have to do things on like a beat sometimes, but yeah, it's not really a dedicated rhythm game. I guess so. it's just Donkey yeah, Konga is the only rhythm game they've ever played. Yeah. Right? yeah. Or like there they, was the Donkey that, Kong like um, elite beat or something like that, I think, as well. That was like a similar like fighting on the beat kind of game, but didn't they do a Mario Dance Mac game? Oh, there was, I think, a DDR Mario edition. I think that's yeah. oh, wow. DDR Mario Mix, yeah. Yeah, Mario Mix. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be all right else? i can see that yeah because what else could bowser uh, you can't just give him a platformer like this the first thing that came to mind for me was maybe like um like some kind of like tower defense game oh yeah i love but that again it's, i don't know how you play as bowser for that because i'm imagining him sieging castles and maybe that's the thing maybe like you're attacking the castles and like yeah, they're trying to yeah, but again. do they want Bowser to win? Like that's the problem in terms of game design. Yeah, but you can say the same thing about Wario. Like, yeah, he was a Wario's villain. fun though. I, yeah, I know, but he doesn't. I guess Wario's in Wario Land. He's sort of in like his own world, and in Wario where he's just like just corporate greed, which is weird, really, when you think about it. It's a weird thing to make a game about. I guess you could. Something you might be able to do is you could maybe play into the like silliness of the fact that Bowser plays like sports with them and everything. And then it's like, yeah, like they're villains, but like, like only kind of right. Like it's like, they're like yeah. almost friends and it could be a thing where like, uh, like Mario 
it, do you like the Luigi game? Like Mario is missing, but you play as Bowser. Like Mario gets kidnapped, and Bowser's like, nobody but me gets to dis- defeat Mario. <laughs> and you got to I mean, rescue was, Mario or something. It was kind of like that in Bowser's Fury, wasn't it? It was because you were talking to Bowser Jr. And he was talking about how upset he was that his dad was angry. And Mario was like seemingly really concerned about it. Like he had like an emotional yeah. connection with Bowser. So I could see that. I could see see that uh, working in that Bowser and Mario are just kind of doing this for fun, and and they really know kind of what what buttons to push in each person. But when push comes to shove, I think ultimately they're they're friends. Wait a I minute! Oh my God! No, you just sold me on it. I my vision for it now is you make this the next three D Mario game, and. The gimmick is that you're like handcuffed to Bowser, <laughs> like it's like a you know, like, like a prison escape movie, you know, like they and they gotta yeah. work together the whole time, and you switch between <laughs> playing as Mario or Bowser, and you can't have it be like the standard, you know. I guess it probably have to be like a spinoff because you would want the I regular think we game just to be need, we need uh, we need Joseph Ferris to come back and do a way out, but a Mario Bowser edition, sure. is what I'm yeah. saying. No, but like I want them to be I want them to be stuck together because I feel like it would be interesting. It could even be that they're like stuck back to back or something so that it's like a banjo. Oh, it, and you do and like a flip as like, a button to like flip. Yeah. And like when you're Mario, like you can run and jump and yeah. stuff. But then when you have Bowser, like he's got more power and like or maybe there's like a thing where like Mario can't really jump the normal way because like Bowser's weighing him down. So like they do like a. Like maybe like Bowser like does the the spin for momentum and then throws Mario and they fling you know you like you just like have like a different kind of physics to it because it's about how these two characters that are different sizes and weights like play off each other yeah. that could be like a fun way to make it a platformer and not have it just be like you know okay it's another platformer in the Mario universe great you know mm-hmm. I I think though. I, I guess uh, Andrew's asking what the series looks like. Like, what is the series? You know? Oh, I yeah. see. Like, what's his Wario? Like, what's his story? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't I know. Do I feel like Mario Maker would have been a, like, you could have been playing as Bowser making the courses or something. Like, you know, like, it's like he's the bad guy. It's got to be something like that, right? Or mm-hmm. I guess you could make a, you could make a game where, it's similar maybe to like the conflict that you described with Bowser Jr. where like all of the like the Koopa kids get kidnapped and Bowser's got to go save them. And like he can like that's an easy way to make him. He's a hero to his kids, obviously. Right. But like he could still be a bad guy, you know, like you don't have to like humanize him too much, you know? Yeah. You could have him like beat up other villains from from the Mario <laughs> series or something. I don't know. <laughs> they're not a lot yeah. of his games like um are like an rpg you know like the mario and luigi series you know I baconator could, could like that. wrote in and said we kind of saw a bowser game with mario and luigi inside story where we got to play bowser for half the game yeah you could do something like that yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. get into the the story behind him a little bit more i'd be about it we love Bowser. <laughs> yeah how deep is bowser how deep does he have How layers? Deep. Is I he like re- an ogre? You know, I gotta say, I feel like he does have layers. You know, like I mean, say what you will about the guy, you know, but like he adopted a bunch of kids that weren't his own and brought them all in, into the family and every like he's 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 got a lot of love to give. You know, like is, yeah, is, but he's like you know he, he's not he's not great, is he? He then indoctrinating no. them into a life of crime. I mean, that's yeah, but not I mean, great. I, I'm sorry. He's he's complex. That's the thing. He does have layers, Steve. He's not a good guy, but I don't know. What I mean, maybe he's not a total bad guy. M- maybe it should be a dating sim because you know he's always kidnapping Princess Peach. Nailed to, it. To, Nailed to it. Try and like marry her and stuff. Like maybe people should set him up with other people, and you go on dates with them, and he's like <laughs> really terrible. He doesn't know how to interact, and he's like. You know, he go he, he when he goes to kiss someone, he burns their face because he breathes <laughs> fire and stuff. I feel like he learns it. social cues. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Weirdly, you know, I'm into it. I'm into it. Get a bunch of like rhythm mini games in there. You could put, you could, yeah, get the, you know, get the musical aspect in there as well. He goes on dancing dates and stuff. Who's to say? 
Yeah. Hey, I'd be I'd fine be if they shoehorn in a dancing stage game. I'll be all there. I'm in. I'm in. I think that's the yeah. winner for me, Steve. I think you nailed it. I agree. <laughs> All right, gang, if you want to let us know what your dream Bowser game would look like or you want to write in on your thoughts on the next Switch and how it should take advantage of your Nintendo account, make sure you're right into us. And there's a bunch of ways you can do that. Uh, remember, head over to flipscreen.games and you'll find links to our Patreon, our Discord, our email address, our Twitter, however you want to get involved. Or you want to, if you're on YouTube, go hit the comments, right? However you want to get involved and write into the show, we thank you for tuning in to another episode of Nintendo Noise. And uh, go go click on some links over on that their website. It helps us out a lot. Won't cost you a pretty penny. And it uh, helps people know about the show and all that good stuff. And of course, thank you to everybody who wrote in for today's show. And uh, there are a bunch of you that hit us with questions over at uh, questions at flipscreen.games or on the Discord that we didn't get to today because there was a jam-packed news day. So we're going to save those for next week. If we didn't get to your question this week, we'll weigh in on it then. Uh, so why don't you write in with some more so we can just have a nice big question block be like the whole episode next week. Because you know I love to do that. So that's my challenge to you, the listener, this week. So for the crew, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. She's been Sierra. We'll see you next week. <laughs>